Okay, I'm going to ask you that question. Do you ever tell lies? Now, if you respond to that by saying no, okay, there's one right there. So the fact is, everybody tells a lie at some point or another. That's kind of a sad thing to have to say, isn't it? But you know, the studies will show that, the, I've read studies that'll say that people lie on average of 11 times a week. I read one that says that we lie on average of six times a day. You do the math and that 11 times a week doesn't hold up very well. So I'm not sure which one to believe, but the fact is people can tell lies and we just don't present ourselves in a truthful way. Now, I wanna tell you a story about how I got caught in a lie and it taught me a pretty good lesson, at least I hope it did. Now, when I was 19 years old, my family moved from Atlanta, Georgia, out to Fort Worth, and we were at the new house, and I received a, a knock on the door one evening, and there was a lady across the street named Mrs. Dietz, and she brought over a big slice of coconut cake. She said, you're new to the neighborhood. I'm pleased to have you here, and I just wanted to uh, give you this uh, as, a, as a token to say welcome to the neighborhood. And I thanked her. I said, you know, that was so nice, and I appreciate you bringing this cake. So when we closed the door, I immediately took the cake and threw it in the garbage can in the kitchen. You see, I hate coconut. I can't stand anything that has coconut in it. It just makes me gag just to think about eating something with coconut. Yeah, I don't like coconut, so I threw it in the trash. Well, the next evening, I realized I need to take that plate back to Mrs. Dietz. So I went to her house, rang the doorbell. She answered, and I said, Mrs. Dietz, here's your plate. And then I said... And I have to tell you, I don't know when I've ever had such coconut cake that was so good. It was really delicious. You're quite a cook. And I just want to say thank you. That just really made my day. Well, she looked at me and said, you're in luck. We're just finishing dinner and we're about to sit down and eat coconut. We're about to eat dessert and we still have more coconut cake left. Come on in. And I told her, I said, well, no, I need to get back home. And she looked at me and said, you're new to the neighborhood. <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have anything to do. And so she grabbed me by the arm and brought me to her kitchen table where her family was, sat me down and put this big, huge slice of coconut cake right in front of me. And she just said, eat up. And there's plenty more where this came from. So I asked her for something cold to drink to maybe wash it down. It didn't do any good. And in front of everyone, I had to eat that coconut cake, and I can't tell you how awful it was. Now, when I look back on that, I think, man, alive, did I get caught in a whopper, and it didn't pay off very well for me. Now, one of the things that I find when I deal with people in the counseling office is people will tell lies, and more often than not, it has uh, more to do with things beyond just coconut cake. There are times when people are involved in behaviors that they know they don't need to be in, uh, involved in, whether it's an extramarital affair or mismanaging money or uh, being with people that uh, they're, uh, somebody else doesn't want them to be with or managing uh, their time and their schedules in ways that they don't want other people to know. And so we can lie and give cover-ups and tell falsehoods. Now, sometimes we just say it's a little white lie. Other times it's just deeply pathological and ingrained in a person's character but people can lie. Now, why is that? Well, let's keep in mind that everybody out there is going to have some sort of expectation for you, whether it's actually vocalized or not. And you're measuring what are the people uh, in front of me? What are they expecting of me? And then if I reveal who I am, will I receive shame? Will I be understood? And so you gauge and then you give your declarations often based on that. Uh, it could be that you want to be perceived differently from what you really are, which then leads to the question, are you just a manipulator? I was kind of being a manipulator with Mrs. Dietz that time, wasn't I? And so you want to craft an image. And so telling some of the real things about yourself may not fit. And so you conveniently uh, bring in some things that may not be accurate. Many people lie because they want to maintain their sense of influence or power. And so to come across as weak or human or uh, mistaken, then that might uh, dismiss some of their power that they're going for. Um, many times people will just say whatever is expedient in the moment because uh, they're, they're wanting to uh, get people to have certain responses to them. And so just saying whatever they think the person in front of them wants to hear, they'll do that. 
Many times people lie because they don't want to be punished. And this goes to uh, whether they've done something moral or inappropriate or uh, uh, something that's going to um, uh, bring shame or dishonor upon them. It's like, I don't want to be punished. And so lying is part of their avoidance of that. Some people lie for the opposite of that. They want to be rewarded. They want people to say, wow, you're really terrific. And you make up a false uh, persona about who you are. Some people lie just because they don't want to be known. I don't want you to know anything about me, so I'll just say whatever I have to say to get you off my back. Many people lie because they're just way too image conscious. And uh, now what the, what's really going on inside may not fit with the persona that they want people to know. So there's all sorts of reasons that people lie. And then let's go a little bit further and say that there are uh, ways that people can communicate with one another that actually increase the propensity to lie. For example, when you are in the presence of someone who's a very forceful person, very dogmatic. Okay, it's like, uh, you're going to try to start telling me what to do, and, and the less you know about me, the better. Or you may be that way towards someone else. Or if you're in the presence of someone who's strongly opinionated. It's like, well, you have your mind already made up about things, and if I tell you my opinion, all you're going to do is argue with me, and I don't want to do that, so I'll just say what I have to do to get out of the conversation. Many times it could be that you're in the presence of someone who's highly judgmental. And I've known many people who will say, you know, if I start revealing what I really am, there's no way I'm going to get out of it unscathed. Now, interestingly, those judgmental people, they have their problems too, but it's like, now let's just focus on yours. And so we, it creates an atmosphere of dishonesty there. Sometimes you, you lie because the person in front of you is very argumentative. They, they can argue with anything and everything. And it's like, I just want to stay out of it. I don't want to have, have anything to do with it. Some people are just closed-minded. So there are all sorts of reasons that people can say that they lie. But really, when it comes down to it, it comes down to the question of character, integrity, ethics, responsibility. And I'm hoping that as you examine this propensity that we can have regarding lying, you can examine yourself and ask, is that really necessary for me to be a dishonest person? Now, let me give you a few thoughts as we uh, kind of summarize how we might respond to this whole problem of telling lies. The first thought is, it is reasonable to use discernment with respect to how much you're going to reveal to others about who you are. Now, there's some people that they really are not safe people. And they really, uh, you don't really need to talk with them on any kind of in-depth level about who you are and what you do simply because you don't want them in your grid, so to speak. Or for that matter, they're just, uh, you, you can only have a certain number of people that you can be fully open and disclosing with. And so using a certain amount of discernment can be a, a normal and good thing. And if you leave out some information or if you don't talk about certain topics with uh, some people, that's okay up to a point as long as you know that you have strong accountability and openness and vulnerability with people that actually do matter. And so let, let's, let's not uh, be so purist about this that we say you have to say everything that needs to be said at all times with all people because we do need to use discernment with that. But then a second huge thought that I want you to uh, focus in on is check your levels of integrity. How important is integrity to you and character? And how much do you uh, give prominence to that being a central feature as to who you are? And I'm hoping that you'll determine that you don't want to be known as somebody that can manipulate people into doing your bidding or liking you. Because in the end, what do you really have if you have relationships based on falsehoods and, and uh, improper uh, perceptions? Uh, let's make sure that integrity is something that leads the way in the way that we engage with one another. And then a third thought, check out and check your levels of justification and rationalization. Do you really have to justify who you are toward other individuals? You might be able to say, this is who I am, or this is what I've done, and here's how I manage my life, and um, live in such a way where you don't have to rationalize. Just be you. Uh, in addition, uh, we want to say that you're not required to have to take responsibility for other people's responses to you. Now, I could have said to Mrs. Deeds, this is really nice uh, that you brought this coconut cake over. Um, I, I'm not a, a cake eater like this with coconut, but we have people here that will eat it, and I'm sure that somebody's going to be able to take care of it. And that would have been an honest thing, and I could have said that, but I was trying to craft an image, and I got caught in that. 
Now, a final thought, and that is, if you're living a life where you really feel like you have to cover up what's truly going on in your in yourself, uh, I think it's a matter of you uh, rearranging your priorities and asking, uh, what kind of priorities can I maintain so that lying is not necessary in the first place? And, and I'm hoping that as you examine this whole propensity that we humans have to be dishonest and tell lies, you'll come to the determination, like I want to have that same determination that says, I don't want to be somebody who naturally can just pop off with untruths and manipulations and, and falsehoods. I don't want to be that person. I want to be somebody whose word is their bond. And when I say things to you, then I'm going to have a believability factor. Is that a goal that you would aspire to? I hope so. Uh, see, let's keep in mind uh, one of the themes that I have here on the Dr. Les Carter channel. Uh, DL, uh, Dr., no, Dr. C, DRC stands for dignity, respect, and civility. And I want us to live into those kinds of ingredients. And I think as we have that kind of character leading the way, then truth, openness, safety, honesty will also go right along with it. Would you join me in that? Now, I do hope that uh, videos such as this uh, are uh, useful to you. And if you look below, below the video, you'll see a subscribe button. I would invite you to hit that button and subscribe with us so that you can be apprised of more videos that come along. Beneath the video, I have resources regarding uh, online workshops and books and online counseling and things of that nature that I would hope that if you could uh, use those that you would avail yourself to that. Just know that I'm honored to be with you along your growth journey. I really do appreciate you including me in your personal improvement. That having been said, I shall see you next time.